one of the main pillars of Christian theology. Now, again, they, today, because of political correctness, the Catholic Church tries to move away from it, and I, you know, I appreciate that. But there's something called supersessionist super session, theology. And the basic idea is that because the Jewish people were sinful, even before they killed Yashka, they were sinful, and because the temple was destroyed, and because uh, the Jewish people have been exiled to the four corners of the earth, God has abrogated his covenant with the Jewish people because of their sins. And indeed, one of the names for the Catholic Church is the new Israel, the new Israel. They claim to be, they don't, they don't use the words the Jewish people, but they say, we are the children of Israel. That's why it's called the New Testament. New Testament, meaning to say the old covenant between God and the Jewish people has been canceled because of sin. That is why, by the way, the establishment of the state of Israel in 1948 was an enormous theological challenge to Christian theology. It didn't compute because it was, un it was always understood, even if you weren't anti-Semitic, I mean, I mean, it was used by anti-Semites as an excuse, but even if you weren't into persecuting Jews, per se, but it was understood that the exile of the Jewish people until they accept Yashka and kind of do tshuva means God has abrogated his covenant with the Jewish people. They are no longer his nation. This is supersessionist theology. So how could it be that God gives the Jewish people their land again? That is why Vatican... The Vatican did not recognize uh, Israel. I'm not sure even now they recognize it. Um, but a pope did not visit uh, Eretz Israel till Pope John, I think it was in 1965 or 64, something like that. And that's an enormously theological problem. Now today, as I say, uh, the Catholic Church, Vatican II and all that other stuff, they try to be polite and they talk about uh, we're their older brothers and divine wisdom. Okay. But the truth of the matter is, again, and I appreciate it, I don't want to knock them because they're trying to create unity on some level. But the truth of the matter is, uh, the, the, their ultimate theological premise does, whether they say it or not, and whether they cover it up or not, is based on God rejecting the Jewish people. The Maral says it's exactly the opposite point. God may hold us to account. God may punish us. There may be gullus. There may be chorban. We're not saying unconditional love means no responsibility. But the covenant and the relationship with Hashem can never be destroyed, no matter what we do. Because it's ava she'ena toluya bedavar. And that is why the Maral says the Torah gives no reason for the choice of Avraham because the bris, the covenant that Hashem makes with Avraham does not depend on anything. Now, let me give you a striking illustration of this from somewhere else in, in Nach. One of the prophets uh, of Israel is the prophet called Hosea. Hosea is the first of the 12 books. There are 12 smaller they call them the minor prophets. You can't use the word minor. They're not minor prophets, but they're smaller prophetic books. And they're treated as one book. It's called Treyosar, the, the book of the 12 prophets. And the first uh, prophet in that book is Hosea. And when you look at Hosea, you see a very, very bizarre narrative. God appears to the Navi Hosea, and he tells Hosea to marry a well-known prostitute whose name was Gomer. I mean, the god of Hanavi marries a prostitute. He marries her. And she continues to practice her prostitution even when she's married to a Navi. Imagine the shame. Imagine the humiliation. Now, there's a machloka. Some of Forsham say it would be inconceivable that Hashem actually made him do it. So some say this was a dream sequence. Hashem gave him a prophetic dream in which all of this was in his mind. For our purposes, it makes no difference if it really happened or it was a prophetic dream that Hashem wanted him to experience. Okay, that's a, it's an important question, but it's not, it's not really relevant to the point I want to make. But what's going on? Why would God tell him to marry a prostitute? 
So the Gemara in Pesachim gives us a backstory that once again is not in the text. And that is, Hashem comes to Hosea like he comes to all the prophets and says, give the Jewish people Musr, bring them to Tshuva. Right? That's what Hashem is always telling the prophets. Hosea said to God, you know God, been there, done that. Like how, how, how many times are we going to go through this? Tell them to repent, and they don't repent, and they go back the, the bad ways. He says, Hashem, you got to take decisive action. Forget about them. Abrogate the covenant with them and make another nation. Now, if you remember, this is exactly the opposite of Moshe Rabbein. Hashem says to Moshe Rabbeinu after the Chet HaEgel, I'm going to wipe them out and make my covenant with you. And Moshe says, no deal. I go with them. Either you bring them along or wipe me out along with them. But Hosea, Hosea was a great nabi, he was not Moshe Rabbeinu. Hosea said to God, this tshuva game is just getting boring. Again, I'm paraphrasing a little bit. He says, just find somebody else. He, you know, he didn't say it had to be him even. He says, find somebody else. So here's the thing. The Jewish people are compared to God's wife. God's the husband, we're the wife. And we're an unfaithful wife who commits adultery by going after other gods, whether those gods are idols, or whether those gods are money. Money can be an idol too, power. Hashem wanted Hosea to experience what it's like to have a wife that you love, because in fact, Hosea grew to love her. But she's so unfaithful. But you just can't get rid of her because you love her so much. And then he says to Hosea, now you see my problem? I'm kind of stuck with the Jewish people. They're unfaithful. They're not worthy. But I'm stuck. Got the idea? That's why your proposal is not really a feasible proposal. I can't get rid of them. My connection is too deep. So he wanted Hosea as a Navi to put himself in Hashem's shoes, Kav Yochel, to understand the meaning of an unconditional love. Okay, and that's the idea of Ava She'eno Tuluya B'davar. And that's something that we have to have chizuk. You know, there are times that are very, very, sometimes, I mean, I, I wouldn't describe this as such a dark time. I mean, I mean, we have challenges, but there were times of the Holocaust, there were times that were really, 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 really dark. And there are times that Jews gave up hope. And there are times that they felt Hashem rejected them and Hashem didn't care. And the message of the Maral in Lech Lecha, and the message of Hosea the Navi is that there are going to be difficult times, there are going to be challenging times. But just remember that underneath the surface of everything that's going on is a divine love, a divine compassion, which can never be severed, never be destroyed, and will eventually reveal itself, eventually, in the form of redemption and open closeness to Hashem. Okay, and that is why, once again, uh, the Torah does not give us a reason for the choice of, of Avram. Mm -hmm.